Welcome to U.S. Immigration TV. Well, on September 30, 2021, Alejandro Mayorkas, who is the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, issued new guidelines for the enforcement of civil immigration laws, which are to become effective on November 29, 2021, or 60 days later. Well, this memo has been described as, and I quote, a dramatic shift in U.S. immigration enforcement policy that will likely spare most undocumented immigrants who have lived in the U.S. for years from deportation or removal. In essence, this memo provides guidance to Homeland Security for the, and I quote, apprehension and removal of non-citizens, close quotes. More importantly, it provides guidance or a framework for the government to exercise prosecutorial discretion, which is basically the government deciding who is subject to arrest, detention, removal, or deportation, and who should be left alone, even though they may technically be subject to deportation or removal. Now, the reason for DHS to exercise prosecutorial discretion is explained in the memo. Basically, there are more than 11 million undocumented or otherwise removable non-citizens in the U.S. So the government simply does not have the resources or manpower to pursue removal proceedings against every single one of them. In addition, there's simply not enough courtrooms and they're already suffering from backlog. Therefore, DHS believes it needs to exercise discretion or judgment and determine who to prioritize for immigration enforcement or deportation and who should be left alone. In, in other words, everyone who breaks any law should be prosecuted, of course, whether they're jaywalking or robbing a bank. Now, both of them have broken the law, right? But the jaywalker, you know, really poses little threat to society and Realistically, law enforcement should not be wasting its time and resources going after jaywalkers, but instead they should be focusing on the more dangerous lawbreakers. So, so that pretty much explains what prosecutorial discretion is all about. This new memo even recognizes the contributions being made by so many people who are out of status or who are undocumented including you know, those who work on the front lines in the battle against COVID, teach our children, do backbreaking work, and really just want to be legal so they can fully contribute to the U.S. The memo goes on to state, and I quote, the fact an individual is a removable non-citizen should not alone be the basis of an enforcement action against them. In other words, if the only violation a person has is being out of status, that should not warrant them being targeted for removal or deportation. Instead, DHS wants to focus its efforts on, and I quote, those who pose a threat to national security, public safety, and border security, and thus threaten America's well-being. So let's go through each one of those. Number one, threat to national security. This includes non-citizens who are engaged in terrorism, espionage or spying, or terrorist-related activities, or otherwise pose a threat to national security. Number two, threat to public safety. Remember the other one was national, this is public. This includes those who have committed serious criminal conduct. Number three, threat to border security. Now this includes people who are apprehended or caught at the border or port of entry or airport while attempting to unlawfully enter the U.S., such as perhaps what's happening now at the southern border, or they were apprehended or caught in the U.S. after unlawfully entering after November 1, 2020. This memo also instructs officers that they should not target a person for apprehension or removal because of their race, religion, gender, sexual orientation or gender identity, national origin, or political associations. As the memo states, we must ensure 
that enforcement actions are not discriminatory and do not lead to inequitable outcomes. Sort of like they don't want to target gays or Muslims or things like that. It has to be equally applied across the board. The memo also seeks to protect or assure vulnerable non-citizens who constantly face threats of being reported to immigration by, let's say, their landlords or their employers who may seek to exploit them by threatening to turn them over to immigration. You know, for example, a landlord may charge high rents because a person is out of status. A, an employer may pay people low wages and make them work long and hard, threatening that if they complain, they'll turn them over to immigration. As the memo states, and I quote, we must ensure our immigration enforcement authority is not used as an instrument of these and other unscrupulous practices. Now I know there have been many previous memos on prosecutorial discretion. I even posted videos on this channel about them. So what sometimes happens is a memo will come out and then lawsuits are filed opposing that memo. Courts issue injunctions and then new memos come out. But this particular memo is now going to be the operative memo or guidance on prosecutorial discretion. So how can you benefit from this new memo? If you or anyone you know is in deportation or removal, or you may have already been ordered removed, but you're not one of those listed enforcement priorities, you really should consult with an attorney who can evaluate your case and, and immigration history, and perhaps can request that the government exercise prosecutorial discretion. And that could include perhaps not pursuing removal proceedings against you in the first place, or maybe dismissing or dropping existing removal proceedings, or even having a previous removal or deportation order reopened and the case dismissed so that you maybe can pursue a green card through other ways. Maybe you just married a U.S. citizen. But the documentation and the evidence has to be properly gathered, assembled, and packaged, as well as properly presented to the government. That's why, if you could benefit from prosecutorial discretion, you should consult with an attorney for guidance. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. If not, maybe for yourself, maybe you've never been in removal proceedings, maybe you have a friend or relative who may be facing removal proceedings or was already ordered removed. So please make sure that you share this video with them as well as like, and most importantly, to subscribe to this channel. So you'll receive updates on the latest immigration news and information. I'm Michael Gerfinkel and thanks for watching US Immigration TV.